This is Kulali and her owner Garth. Garth was a successful engineer who started building Kulali as his final life project. Unfortunately, Garth never got to see her finished. I've been lucky enough to take the challenge on of completing her build and one day to sail her around the world. Similar to Garth, I'm a passionate engineer who loves to know how things work and how to build things. Join me on this journey to bring Garth's dream to life. This is Sailing Kulali. Welcome back to Sailing Kulali. Today we're working on the housing for the bearing, housing for the propeller shaft mechanism, and we're just continuing from yesterday. Oh, it's one of those days, this. Thanks for watching. So what we're doing is we're trying to get this to fit to this, so that this spins at a um, free, in a free sort of way. And in this book, called the Engineer's Black Book, there are the different fit types. And on this, on this page here for preferred limits and fits, there's all the different types of fits you can have. And we're gonna start first with the tightest one, which is called a locational clearance fit, which is a snug fit for locating stationary components which need to be freely assembled and disassembled. So, well maybe, should we go? So the fit that we're gonna go for is, the first fit that we're gonna try is the close running fit, which is accurate location at moderate speeds on accurate machines. But as Des says, we're most likely gonna end up with the free running fit, which is high running speeds, large temperature variations, heavy pressure, and where accuracy is not essential. So it's either one of these two. So hole and shaft for metric is H8F7, which, I think you go here, H8F7, which is that. Then you go down to your nominal diameters, which we'll measure in a sec. This shaft diameter is se around 72 millimeters. And in this book, we're gonna go between 50 and 80, which is this one. And then it's a H8F7 fit. And so these are our numbers here. Okay. Right, so we've worked out using this book that we're going to go with a loose running to free running fit, which is around a 0.1 difference between the shaft and the hole. So we're going to do that now. Yeah, that's not like 72.25. Yeah. So we're going to take 0.2 mil off there to get it to 72.0. So that's now on there with a 0.3 difference between the this and this and it doesn't look like much at all so this casting wasn't exactly round from manufacturing it's oval in shape maybe i don't need to make everything so round <laughs> maybe i'm getting a bit ocd about this so i reckon we take off point one, point one, mm -hmm. and maybe leave that one yeah, so let's just think about that. So you take off point one so the whole thing can move that way a little bit. Yep. So that will give you more clearance between this one and that one. Yep. If we take a bit off this one. So then that will then be tighter against this one. So right. fit it nicely together. Better, yeah. Do you want me to hold that? Oh. Mm. Still a li oh, but that's much better, isn't it? Yep. What do you reckon? We're well, still too tight. Yeah. But. And that's bending a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, the pressure. Mm. Mhm. Mm so. Maybe another point one. I think that we're now going to snip this in half. <laughs> you reckon this is the way to do it? I assume. They're very soft. It's like it definitely feels like nylon. Yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's okay. white inside, which makes it nylon. Yeah. So maybe it's coated. Yep. There we go. So this way? Yep. Looks 
slide in quite nicely. Yeah? Yep, we'll get it about halfway. Get this one in. Uh, this one. Okay. Do you want the other part? Um, yep. I'll hold this. And oh, I see. We'll have to go further around. Otherwise, we won't get this one around here. How does that look? Yeah, that, yeah. Nice. Looking cool. Whoa! Dads! And that feels good. Does it? Mm. Alright, Dad, spin it. I'll spin this. Look at that. Just a bit of contact. <laughs> a bit of. Uh, extra machining at the end, all the other stuff is done. So there is a bit of friction there. So we're just going to check whether this is the right length going through the opening of the engine. Is that coming through, Des? Can you see it? Is that better? <laughs> that's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's good. This is that pump that I got from Audi the other day because the boat's filled up with water because I forgot to put the PVC pipes that run to the deck in the centerboard hole and I sponged it out once and it took ages so let's see how this $12 pump designed in Austria made in China from Audi for $12.99 goes it's pretty hard to film and do this that's the pump seals it even comes with seals Are you ready? I'm actually sucking the hose flat. Oh, really? Mm. Maybe go slower. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Yep. That's cool. How good is that? Welcome back to Sailing Kulali, it's day something and today we're going to finally give this a shot. We've got the new filters in, um, di the diesel and the um, oil filters in and so we're going to pull this motor out again from storage and give it a crack. Jagan is going to start, Jagan is going to start, yeah, yeah. Spring washer. Zinc is pathetic material. Yeah, it's in the general. weakest. That's not going to drop in there, is there? That's is it? why I was careful yeah. removing all of those bits. Yeah, that's okay. Do you okay. want me to mask that off before we get shit in there? Well, yep, you can try, but. Uh, Die cast, I reckon. Oh, and it's pathetic. Price there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to connect that fuel up. Yeah. Alright, so an update on the motor. We discovered that the high pressure fuel pump was shattered, which looks like this. So all the zinc cast, what do you call the casting again, Ian? Zinc die cast. Zinc die cast has failed and it's, it's just literally falling apart description. Not sure about that bit of wood, Des. No, it's pretty rubbish, isn't it? Comes out <clears> of <throat> a spray pot, it's got worms all through it. As long as it helps to stabilise it. I highly... No, no, it's flat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. New oil. Power hitched up. 
How do you tell? That's it. The red. See how that's gone. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm pressing it too hard. And I can keep going. Well, let, let's just start. Yeah. Okay. That, should we give it a crank? Right. So we have the fuel going in. We have the power going in. We put oil in it. We filled up the water in it. We join all the pipes back together again. And the only things that haven't been closed off yet are the injector feed lines from the injector pump. Okay. So we are now ready to give it a turnover and see if we can get some yep. fuel come out of the injectors. Okay, going. Okay. All right, so that was a bit of another fail day. Basically, what ended up happening was we found that um, we put the new filters on, we re we changed the oil out, so we drained all the oil out of here, filled up the oil again, fresh oil, and then uh, plumbed everything up and noticed that this um, this oil. Uh, dipstick was full of diesel and about two liters of diesel ended up coming out of the actual sump uh, the way that we had it set up was the this tank we were pressurizing it with the airline uh, because of that failed um, low pressure high volume pump so we just plumbed it straight into here and that went straight into the the mechanical fuel pump. So somehow diesel got in from that line, this feed line, which comes across here, into the actual sump. And the, the obvious thing is that it went through the actual uh, fuel pump, which means that maybe that fuel pump was has some sort of a leak. <sighs> the um we've changed the oil again tried starting it same setup and no um no diesel got into here um which yeah it's just interesting but the fuel pump is not pumping fuel so i think the next step is just to get that other fuel pump sorted first get a replacement one and then try and sort this out again